service. The choir leading us. Let us begin our service. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. appreciate God for us coming together. What a great joy. We are real overcomers. Praise the Lord. Let's begin our service with this prayer of purity as we prepare our hearts. Today is the day of holy, we are getting Holy Communion. We are dining with Christ. Therefore, we need to prepare our hearts. Let's pray together. Let's sit and pray, please. Almighty God, together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from all, all secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Brethren, listen to what the Lord Jesus Christ himself said. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, 
and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. Then he uttered out the second commandment, which is, you shall love your neighbor as you love yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these two. Lord, have mercy upon us and write these laws in our hearts. Let's join in this general confession. We confess before God those that we have not been able to be faithful to him and to one another, we seek for his forgiveness. Together, Almighty God, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, and against one another in thought, in word, in deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. The glory of your name. Amen. And God is saying now that you have repented. Let's sing to tenderness as we allow our people to come in. Kote tenderness. Yes, oh, oh, Musa. Now that we have repented before God, and our God is a peace-loving God, is a forgiving God. He loves us, he forgives us. Now receive this forgiveness. May the Almighty God, who in his mercy has promised forgiveness, all those who truly repent of their sins, May he have mercy upon you, forgive you, and free you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you always that you should follow what is good in his sight. What is good before your neighbor and keep you, and strengthen you, and prepare you to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> Prophet Isaiah reminds us Chapter 7, verse 14. He says, The virgin shall receive, she shall conceive and bear a son. And this son, his name shall be called Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Let's join in that correct together in agreement with. Isaiah's message. We pray together. We beseech you, O Lord, to pour your grace into our hearts that as we have known the incarnation of your Son, Jesus Christ, by the message of an angel, so by his cross and passion, we may be brought to the glory of his resurrection through Jesus Christ our Lord. Shall stand and sing, led by the choir, before we get the, to intercessions. O oh Lord, my God, when I, in the awesome wonder, welcome the choir. The choir is very smart. We don't you want to receive them? <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. For so after that, we continue and receive other praises as we worship the Lord. Lead us choir. Grace, welcome. Praise. Thank, you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Yes, we shall enter into a time of praise and worship. I would like us to declare these words together. Psalm 108, verse 3. Kindly project them for us. Praises to you among the nations. 
for your mercy is great above the heavens, and your truth reaches to the clouds. Amen. Amen. Great is your faithfulness, O Lord. Amen.
grace is enough for us. Even as we continue to worship you, Lord, your grace is enough. Hallelujah, hallelujah. has been, how he has forgiven you of your sin. Just go ahead and speak those words to Jehovah Jireh. He has healed us. He has brought us here. He has seen us through seasons, dark seasons of life. It has been the Lord. He has been faithful. You would be somewhere else, but you are here. If it weren't for his mercy, where would you be? Lord, we bless you. And this morning, our faith finds a resting place, not in riches, not in the perishable things of this world that our eyes crave for, but in you, O oh God, the everlasting, the one whose promises stand from generation to generation. My faith is found a resting place, no
for us. When we call upon you in our lives, it is because we have tested and proved that there is no one like you. No one touches our hearts the way you do. No one accepts us and brings us back to themselves like you do. No one has pardoned us of our sins, O oh God. No one has wiped away our only you, O oh God. And this moment we come into your presence. Let's go ahead and bring our intercession before the Lord. I do not know what you have been crying to the Lord for. This is the time. Go ahead and pray. You can sit. You can stay standing. But go ahead and pray. This is the hour we need the Lord more than ever before. And this is the moment we let the Lord know what we need. Father, we come before you as your children asking you to have mercy upon us this morning. Lord, we know that in, on our own we have failed you. There are so many times we have put you aside, we have put your word aside and done, done life our own way. Father, we ask you to have mercy upon us. Even as a church, the body of Christ, Lord, we bring repentance before you. Lord, have mercy upon us this morning. Father, we have rejected the grace and the love that you have given us. We have neglected the pain and the torture you went through. And we have moved our own way, oh God. This morning, as the body of Christ, we bring repentance, Father. We pray that you have mercy upon us. We pray that you restore us to your grace. We pray that you restore us to yourself, oh God. Lord, we have not been an example in our families. Yet we call ourselves Christians, oh Father. And it is true, Lord, we follow you, we love you. But we have not known how to draw many to you. Not even our own children, oh God. Father, we have called wrong right. We have followed the ways of wickedness. We have followed the paths of unrighteousness. We have been taken by the pace of the world. Father, we come before you this morning that you will have mercy upon us, that you will forgive us as a church. We have twisted the word, we have twisted the doctrine to suit our own desires. We have pushed our leaders, our priests, our priests, the spiritual leaders, to speak what our ears are itching to hear. And this has not uh, done us good. This morning, we ask you to have mercy upon us. Lord, I pray that your truth shall be embraced by each one of us, O oh God, that the church will go back to the ancient paths, that we shall go back to the point where we asked for the right way, and we shall desire to follow the right way. Father, we come as the nation Uganda. There is so much that is happening in our nation, and if it weren't for your mercy, Lord, you wouldn't have us alive today. There is a lot of bloodshed. There is a lot of abuse, abuse in homes, abuse among the children, Lord, I have mercy this morning. There is a lot of injustice. There is a lot of uh, embezzlement here and there. Lord, wh what belongs to the, to, 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 the, to the list has been snatched away, Lord. And it is us who come to your sanctuary every morning on Sunday. Lord, have mercy upon us. Even when we have seen these things and are able to speak, we have kept quiet. Have mercy upon us as a nation. We bring repentance on behalf of our leaders. Lord, have mercy. We have not stood to, lead, to raise their hands when they are tired. When they go off the script, we only sit back and gossip and talk ill about them. We have not prayed for our leaders. Lord, have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. Lord, we surrender our nation to you. Lord, we give you the children of this nation. Lord, we surrender the servants, the civil servants of this nation. We surrender the leaders of this nation. We surrender the teachers of this nation. We pray that your spirit will inspire us. Take us back where we feared you, O oh God. Where we did not need anyone to watch us do anything. But we worked out of reverence and fear for you. Even those that had not re re uh, confessed you as Lord and Savior. Desired to work for the good of their nation. Take us back to that place, O oh God, where it was not about us and our stomach, where it was about you, O oh God, and the image of our nation, O oh God. Father, we pray that wherever you have placed us, in our jobs, in our businesses, we shall inspire others who see us. 
we shall portray you Christ especially we who are here even us who you have given families we shall raise the children in a godly way that brings you praise oh father that our children will not become the wayward children but they shall be children who will inspire others in their generation father we lift up our children before you lord there is a lot that has been put out to target our children sometimes we do not know what to do as parents sometimes we have not even heard about these things it only comes to us surprise and shock when we hear our children engaged in so many different things in drug addiction in homosexuality in perversions of god lord today we cry for the children of this nation father there is a lot that they have been exposed to but we come to you O king of glory this moment look at our children with mercy O god help our children in this generation yes lord there is a lot that was not before but your grace is prevalent for, prevalent for all. We pray, O oh Lord God of all grace, that you give our children the grace to choose right, my master. Lord, our children, some are innocent. They are being exposed to abusers. They are being exposed to teachers in their schools who do not know you are and are, and are being paid to make them stray. But we cry to you on this altar this morning that you will protect our children, that you will shield them with your love, that you will look out for the lost children and bring them back to your fold. Lord, when we sent them to those schools, some of them knew you. They knew you as their Lord and Savior. The foundation we had given them was right. But Lord, they met a Lord that overcame them, my master. Lord, we pray for them that wherever they are, at whatever point they are, you will bring back our children to you. You will open their eyes to the knowledge of you, Christ. You will re restore the fear of the Lord in their hearts. That they do not need us to watch them. But Holy Spirit, you will do what you do best. Father, we pray for the teachers who we send these children to. Sometimes they are overwhelmed. Sometimes they don't know what to do. Sometimes we, the parents, do not help them do the right thing. But we pray that they will stand firm. We pray that they will not lose their values. We pray that they will not be shaken. We pray that that which you have passed on to them, they will pass on to our children without wavering. Lord, we pray and cover them. Some teachers are exposed to threats by parents. Some are exposed to threats by these evil doers. We cover the, children, the parents of this nation, the, the teachers of this nation, with the blood of Jesus, O oh Lord. Lord, revive Uganda. Restore our nation. And your name will be glorified. Father, ministers are those who are sick. They are those who are nursing their sick ones. You are Jehovah, our healer. You are Jehovah, Rapha. The Bible says that your hand is not too short to touch us. Yes, our sin hinders us. We have repented of our sin. Stretch out your hand, O oh Lord, and heal. Heal those that have been given no hope even by the doctors. Heal those that are wounded. Heal those that are emotionally sick. Heal those that have never known life in its fullness. Lord, some, some of your children have confessed you as Lord and Savior and they pray every day. Today we pray as a congregation that you will touch those who had lost their hope. That, Father, it will be a day of revival. It will be a day of restoration of health. It will be a day of healing. There are those who are nursing their dear ones at home. Stretch your hand and reach them. There are those in hospitals. As a matter of fact, some of us are seated here. But there are certain phone calls we fear to receive. Lord, may you put an end to this. Minister healing, oh God. Father, we thank you for this morning. And we open our hearts today that you will speak your word. Your word that heals. Your word that restores. Your word that brings us back to your love. We open our ears. May each one of us here, may we not remain the same. And for all that we have not prayed for, here in your house we know you meet us at all our points of need. May you meet each one of us according to your will and according to your riches and glory provide that 
that the house of the Lord shall celebrate because you are answering our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Ready, the minister of the word. Let's receive the minister of the word. Jovia. She's not, if she's not here, you come and take her. Praise the Lord. Let's sing to tenderless as people are entering. Kute tendereza. Yesu. Korimana gwandika. Om sai kwe guna zisa. Nevaza. Uh, the reading of today is taken from the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah 31, 31. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, verse 31. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, verse 31. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Not like covenant that I made with their father on the day when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, my covenant that they broke. Through I was their husband, declares the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, declares the Lord, I will put my law within them, and I will write it in their hearts, and I will be their God, and they, will, they shall be my people. And no longer shall each one teach his neighbor and each his brother, saying, No, the Lord. For they shall all know me from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more. That's the word of the Lord. The gospel as was recorded according to St. Mark, chapter 1, and we read from verse 1. Glory to Christ our Savior. Mark chapter 1, reading from verse 1. The beginning of the gospel about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. It is written in Isaiah, the prophet, I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. A voice of one calling in the desert. Prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight paths for him. And so John came, baptizing in the desert region and preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judea countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him, confessing their sins, 
they were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was the message. After me will come one more powerful man, more powerful than I, worthy to, the, the thought, I beg your pardon, let me read verse seven again. And this was his message. After me will come one more powerful man than I, the thongs of whose sandals I'm not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit, the gospel of Christ. Standing, we affirm our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. You know what you believe, so we all stand for the same. I believe in one God. I believe in one God, the Father, creator of heaven and earth. I, I believe in heaven and God. The only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, one being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us. He came down from by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became man. Suffered death. On the third day rose again. And this is the son of the Father. He will come again in God. To judge the living and the dead. This Sunday we are privileged, we are celebrating, this is the Bible Sunday in all churches, and uh, this, uh, for us, St. Luke, we are so blessed that we are hosting the whole president of the Bible Society. Uh, and uh, those of you who know him, he's not only that side, but he's also a very tall man in the other side, uh, the other side of the law of this in this land. So we are so privileged. I want to welcome you, our brother, Justice Mike Chibita. He's our preacher. And uh, together with him, as usual, I always see him with his wife, Dr. Kibita. She's here. She's a, a professor, a doctor in the Uganda Christian University. That's where she teaches. So we are going to sing uh, the family song, and uh, immediately we listen to God's word through his servant. Family song, fire.
Praise the Lord. God is good. And all the time. Thank you. Welcome to St. Luke's Mtinda this morning. Uh, glad to see you in your large numbers. Dear Lord, we pray that you may be with us as we share your word. And uh, remind us about the covenant that you made with us to be our God and us to be your people in Jesus' name. Glad to be here this morning and I came with part of my family. They have introduced uh, my wife. She's uh, Monica Chibita. She's head of School of Journalism and Media Studies at Uganda Christian University. <laughs> and in a few days, we'll be celebrating uh, 33 years in marriage. And uh, out of that union, two of them are here. Benezeri, our firstborn. Uh, and Maria, our secondborn. Yeah. There are three others who are in uh, different places this morning. We are here to talk about the new covenant. Covenant made from the passage that we read in Jeremiah 31, 33. 31 to 34. I will make a new covenant. And God was talking in those days. And that covenant is what we are living in. What is a covenant? It is basically an agreement between two or more people or parties to do or to refrain from doing something. That is uh, really the dictionary and simple meaning of a covenant. It is an agreement between two or more people. In other words, simple words, it is an agreement, it's a pact, it's a convention, it's a contract, promise, understanding, settlement. Some people call it a deal or a memorandum of understanding. All those are names representing what a covenant could be. And God, who made the covenant with us, is a God who is a, special, who is a specialist in covenants. He's a covenant-making God. He's a covenant-keeping God. And he's a covenant-revealing God. Remember those three things about God and covenants. Covenant-making, covenant-keeping, covenant-revealing. Of course, for a covenant, for an agreement, you need two parties. He's on one side, we're on the other side, and we've had the elements of him. On, the other, on this side, we are the people. And unfortunately, the bad news is we are covenant-breaking people. We are contract-violating people. We don't keep promises. So God on one side, who keeps and makes and reveals, on our side, we break. But God has been making covenants since the beginning of mankind with Adam. I'm going to take you through the seven covenants. We don't have time to go through each of them in detail. But just know that the first one was with Adam, and he promised that he will have dominion over the earth. And with Noah, remember the floods, the sign of the rainbow that there will be no more floods to swallow his people. And with Abraham, he promised, he covenanted with him to be the father of many, many nations. And for Moses, covenant number four, that Moses will be God's treasured possession. He also made a covenant with David and promised him that through him he will establish his dynasty, his throne. And the sixth one is the new covenant we are talking about, where he said, I'll be your God and you'll be my people. That is the covenant that God made with us. And the final one, seven, the everlasting covenant, where his steadfast love is from everlasting to everlasting to everlasting. And indeed, God is a God-keeping, uh, covenant-keeping God. Our condition is to obey. That is what we need. But let's look at the elements of covenants. We have promises in, in covenants. I will be your God. That is a promise. That is a promise. I will be your God. And there are terms of the covenant. One of the terms is that he will forgive our sins. And our duty is to repent. Our part of the bargain, we repent. He forgives we obey, he is our God. 
The third term, the third element of a covenant is uh, blood. If you look through all these covenants I've gone through, there was shedding of blood, blood of sheep, blood of human beings, but you know the ultimate blood that was shed was the blood of the lamb at Calvary, and it was the one and final shedding of blood that cleanses us all from all unrighteousness. The fourth element, fourth and final, is there is a seal, to seal all this. And a seal, as we'll be looking at, even in modern contracts, there is always a seal, a stamp, to a lesser extent. It is a mark of ownership. It is a mark of being set apart. And almost all agreements today have all these elements we've looked up at, promises, terms, and seal. We don't have blood in uh, modern day agreements and contracts. Though some people, I understand, when they want to become friends, they cut something and put, immerse it in blood. I think it is trying to reflect a covenant with God that uh, blood must be part of it in order for it to be sealed. New covenant, what is the application for us? The promise, which is one of the elements, the first one, God says, I will be your God. And this is a very fundamental promise. He will be our God. And God has kept this promise since Adam. Through Abraham and Moses and David, he has kept the promise to be their God and he has said he will be our God. And I believe the reason we are here this morning is because he has kept his promise to be our God. In terms of the covenant, are that he will uh, forgive our sins. He will protect us. He will preserve us. He will prosper us. He will give us life, life abundantly and eternal life. On the other hand, we need to trust, we need to obey, we need to acknowledge him as our God. The blood we've talked about is the blood of the lamb. It was shed. And of course, people still, as I said, try to mimic the blood as a component of a covenant. When people, cars were fewer, even bicycles, I'm understanding, when there were few bicycles and you brought one into the family, you slaughtered a chicken and sprinkled. And they did that with cars. But now that cars have become too many causing traffic jams, I don't hear of many people sprinkling uh, blood on them. But I think that is trying to say that uh, we need blood to seal this covenant. And of course the seal as the final element of a covenant. The word seal is used all over scripture as a sign and a mark of ownership that God owns us. We are his people. One of the scriptures is 2 Timothy 2.19 which brings out the idea of the seal as a mark of ownership. As a mark of protection, we are protected. As a mark of having been set apart, we are God's people. As we mentioned earlier, we humans, we specialize in or we find ourselves breaking promises, violating agreements and contracts day and night. In fact, the reason courts exist is to adjudicate over parties who have violated the terms of the agreements every day, every day. Broken promises and disappointments in marriages, broken marriage vows in land transactions. You get one title and uh, it's multiplied so many titles on one piece of land. This is not honoring the terms of an agreement. Even sale of motor vehicles, we see in employment, people sign contracts, I'll pay you one million per month, the month ends, the payment is not coming. I'll remit NSSF, I'll remit pay as you earn, very, very common and the employers don't do. Some of it, most of it, is deliberate. People decide, no, I think I can uh, breach and get away with it. Some of them are beyond our control. That's why in law, one of the only reasons you can be released from a contract is when something called act of God happens. So the law recognizes God is uh, sovereign. 
he can override contracts and agreements and make it possible, impossible for them to be, ex, uh, to be uh, abided by. One of the examples in the recent past is COVID. Anybody who had a contract knows that there was no way you could uh, fulfill your terms of the... People had tickets with airlines. A ticket is a kind of contract. Fly me to London, Heathrow. There was no, no plane flying. And, and so the contract could not be, you know, uh, consummated because an act of God, God had... Uh, is it God who shut down the world? He had a hand in it anyway. He wasn't taken by surprise. So we call that in law act of God. Beyond your control. You would want, but you can't. But the other reason is we are weak as human beings. We are unabandoned. We are not in control of situations all the time. One of these came to us last week. You know, an accident happened in Nambole. People were in cars, waiting, going somewhere. You know, if you ever thought you were in control of your life, of your destiny, I think that was a reminder. You are in a taxi going somewhere or walking. All of a sudden, you know, mayhem happens. Somebody either loses control and cars piling up, and then you are a victim. So, for very many reasons, we are unable to uh, keep our end of the bargain. Some of it is... Uh, deliberate, but some of it is because our nature as human beings, we can't, we are incapable. And that's why God says, I'll be your God, and I will cover you up, I'll forgive you out of your weakness if you cannot do any of the obligations. Even to him, we are unable. We are all here this morning, and uh, various reasons you came. You may have been uh, brought here kicking and screaming, you may have come here seeking and searching. Maybe you heard about that covenant with God. It was just Sunday and it's a routine. You are brought up going to church every Sunday morning and you're here. Or you are here and you don't know why you are here. You stumbled. Just said, I need to go somewhere and you found yourself here. Or you're here because you are in the choir. And as a good uh, Christian choir, you have to be here. You are the catechist. I'm also here because president of the Bible Society, Bible Sunday, I have to be here. But I'm gladly here. I'm glad to be with you this morning. And I have some other people from Bible Society. Could you please stand up? People from Bible Society, there is one and uh, there are two of them. And part of the reason we are here is because the Bible Society is uh, an umbrella which brings together all church Bible-believing uh, Christians of whatever denomination, Anglican, Catholic, actually the chairman, board of directors, governors of uh, Bible site is a Catholic priest. We have uh, the Metropolitan of the Orthodox Church. We have uh, the Seventh-day Adventist. Anybody who believes that the Bible is the word of God, we come together. We forget a bit about our disagreements, whether... The Sabbath is a Sunday or Saturday. All those, we, we agree to forget a little bit and uh, we concentrate on the Bible as the word of God because it contains that important covenant that he will be our God and will be his people. And we all agree that that is an important covenant. And so we have to disseminate the Bible. We have to distribute it. We have to produce it. And that is part of the reason we are here today to appeal to you to join us and be partners. It's, it's, it's giving you an opportunity to participate in the covenant because if people don't read the word, they will not know about the covenant and then it will be very difficult. So you can become a member of the Bible Society of Uganda. The people are there, they have the cards and I'm going to ask anybody interested, you put up your hand, you can become a member, annual member for a small fee or you can become a life member, pay once one million shillings and uh, forever your name will be in the membership of the Bible Society of Uganda. You don't have to pay the one million uh, at a go. You can pay 10,000 per month, whatever you can afford. 
anybody interested in partnering with the Bible site of Uganda, please put up your hand and they bring the, the card to you. Anybody in St. Luke's this morning says I want, there are some hands here. There is a hand here. Please uh, put up your hands and they will bring, uh, they bring you the cards and you can become. Uh, keep those hands up and uh, Slavia will bring, there, there are some hands here. There are some hands here and uh, some is the other side. Please keep, they, they, they will distribute. But that's what we are trying to do. And uh, we translate the Bibles into various local languages, vernaculars, so that people are able to read the Bible in their language. I will tell you a story from uh, Malaysia. So Malaysia has Bible Society of Malaysia. <clears throat> and they have several languages. Now, the local name for God in one of the Malaysian languages is Allah. Now, as you know, there are many Muslims in uh, Malaysia, and so they brought an injunction against distribution of the Bible which had the word Allah as God. Thankfully, the president of the Bible site of Malaysia was also a lawyer, and so they had to co go to court and say, but Allah is our local name for God. And so what do you want us to call him in our Bible? And thankfully, the courts sometimes do justice. And uh, this is, was one of the times. And they said Allah is not a, a, is not a, a preserve of the Islam language. There are some languages for which God is called Allah. And they allowed the Bible Society to distribute the Bibles. So these are some of the battles Bible societies over the world are going through in order to ensure that uh, the Bible is read by people in their own languages. We thank God that we are here this morning to partake of the covenant that he made with us. And so I will just remind you that God is a covenant revealing God. He's a God keeping, he's a covenant keeping God and he's a covenant making God. He is in that business and he keeps his side of the bargain. And we agreed that the covenants have four elements, the promise, the terms, the blood and the seal. But we also said, humanly speaking, we violate contracts, we break agreements for many, many various reasons. So marriages are broken, oaths are broken, hearts are broken, promises. Maybe you're here and uh, you're a victim of one of those. Alternatively, you could be the one who has done that. Alternatively, the third alternative, you could be partaking of both sides. You have violated, they have violated. It happens. You are not unique. It happens all over the world because of our humanity. And that's why God said, I'll be your God. You'll be my people. The terms are that when you fall, confess your sins and I will forgive you. Indeed, in Matthew 11, 28, he says, come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden. These are some of the things that make us labor and are heavy laden. In court, you see somebody whose uh, contract has been violated and, and so many things. 